path out to celebrate the life and work of a unique performer, a very kind man who died just a short while ago, Larry Grayson. I've had this marvellous holiday. I told you, didn't I? You look as though you're embalmed. <laughs> well, actually, this year, I went, I thought I'd do something different, because usually I go to the seaside, you know, with Slack and Everard and all that lot, but I had such a terrible time last year, I went to, to Margate, and of course, Slack, she loves the fairground and all that, and I can't be doing with it. I mean, she lives on those chairplanes. <laughs> she's mad about the Big Dipper, and, uh, and she's not alone, but I thought, well, I thought... <laughs> I thought this year, and of course the year before I went, I, I, the year before that I went with Everard, we went abroad, that frightened me to death, and he went out one day, I think we were in a place called, I've got the worms, we were in um, <laughs> a place called Hammermet, it's in Tunis, you know, and he went out into the water, and I sat there, because he loves the water, you know, it's good for his war wound, <laughs> and, um, he went out there, and I was terrified, because he got into trouble, with an octopus. I thought Everard's gone and I shouted out, cut off its tentacles. <laughs> well the lifeguard was deaf and he... the old movies you see I can't bear all this getting into bed with everybody and uh, you don't have to get into bed with everybody nobody no, frightens my dog I mean when I, you see, but I, I, I don't like things like that well I perhaps I'm, it's because I'm getting older oh nonsense I mean the doctor, no, no. No, no. <laughs> he said when you're 39 you'll find that you'll change <laughs> he'd obviously had his share of life's trials and tribulations and it showed on his face. And this is very good for a comedian because it, uh, it helps the audience to warm to you. He had great simpatico. He, really, he was a very brilliant man. Okay, he may not have been reading War and Peace or things like that, or that kind of mind into things, but of course she was very, very astute when it came to working with people and working their personalities and so on. He said you would love to have a go at being uh, the front or the back of a pantomime horse, yes. just for experience. But it's a strange ordeal. <laughs> no, that's true, because I was, I have played the back and the front of a pan... No, no don't laugh. Don't laugh, because I... <laughs> and when I was in the front of the pantomime horse, I never said one word to the fellow at the back. And he never said a word to me. And when I was at the front, him at the back never said a word to me, and I never said a word to him. And yet, it's strange, but I, I had a feeling that I knew him very well. LAUGHTER